neck bearing torque. We're going to do that next. I've been promising you guys for a long time that we would take care of this. Steering head bearing, okay? Steering head bearing adjustment. That's what we're talking about there in your book. You can see I've used this a little bit. I don't even have to. It's already <laughs> just torn to that page. And you got the three wrong ways to do it, okay? The wrong ways it should be. And the one, everybody should have a manual if you're even thinking about it. Yeah, shoot, I don't care if you work on your bike or not, you should have a manual, okay? That's what we're gonna talk about, neck bearing torque. Uh, this is the swinging back and forth part, all right? This is the, this is this. Okay, so we're just gonna do it by the book. I've only got a little bit. Pretty close there. Um, we're just gonna do it by the book pretty much, okay? Yeah, but I wanna kick back. Sorry guys, I didn't mean to leave you on the alignment video. The, I was so happy the bike, the bike was so straight that uh, I didn't tell you what you gotta do if you, I don't run into that very often. Seldom do I get the, uh, get where it doesn't require any adjustment at all. Um, that they're so straight, okay? So you're probably gonna have to make a couple little turns or something. And we talked about these in the earlier video. Um, this is the Hyman adjuster. it's up in front. Remember I told you that you turn them down to break them loose, okay? So, got that. So, see the one's left hand, one's a right hand thread, so you turn them down. It's sitting in the bike just like that, boom, just like that. The one on the front, and you turn them down, okay, to loosen them, all right? And then, if you wanna move this over this way, you turn that down. See there, see, getting wider. And if you wanna pull it in, you wanna pull your motor in, which would move your line, move your line in, right? To move your line in, and you wanna go this way and turn it up, and then turn them back up to lock them in. And the one on top, so you get your two lines parallel with these, all right? Get two lines parallel with these, this. Leave the top one disconnected and then adjust the top one. Again, and it does the same way. You turn them down to loosen them and up to tighten them and the adjustment is the, star, the center adjuster. <laughs> the center adjuster is the same. It would go down to lengthen the rod, or turn down and to go up, okay? So just get them Get your two lines parallel. It shouldn't take much at all. Do it like I showed earlier. Let's get back to the neck bearing part. I just wanted you to know that. Be sure I talk to you about that. So what we're gonna do, you know, is we're gonna adjust those bearings. And I want you to think about all this. Here's a picture of it. Sorry. Here's a picture of it with the tree off, okay? This would be with the top tree off. That's what you'd be looking at, that star. You see that? You see that in there? You used to have your book looking at that star adjuster. Okay, that's a star adjuster nut there. All right, that's gonna torque down on the top bearing. You wanna think about all this a little bit maybe. That's gonna torque down on the top bearing and then the big nut on top right there, okay, is going to pull the tree up in. So it's pulling, putting, pulling up on the bottom bearing. And you don't want all your torque on the top. You want to get your three swings with the uh, with uh, close to equal pressure on both. Although you do want to pull it up tight on top. And the book tells you to torque the top between 60 and 80 foot pounds. That's an 03 manual, and they're all the same. This is the 07. Shows it the same way. Okay. I'll get to it. I don't want to waste your time. Shows it just exactly the same way. Same pictures and everything. And there's this tool they say you can get or you can make out of a, a quarter inch drill bit. I don't know. I just get a big screwdriver myself. Oh, here you go. 
I just took a long, thin screwdriver and uh, ground the tip off and just put a little bend in it. The bend's on the road glides mostly. If you got an electric glide or a road king, you really don't need to put the bend, you can just go straight. Maybe a little bit stiffer screwdriver. This one flexes a little bit, so you might want to get a little bit thicker one to get on that star. Mm -hmm. It's the only way to do this. I'm going to show you where everything is. I think that's the hardest part is figuring out where all the stuff is. <coughs> so we got to open up the ferry. And just real quick, look, you know, in case you haven't had it off, you know, most of you have, but you know you've only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws, okay? So you got the three across the top. There's one right up in here. So you pull the bars all the way over, okay? And it's right up inside there, and then and then there's one here that brings up the, the grease the neck. Grease your neck, guys. There's a zerk fitting on the left side. You guys know this. I don't think, well, I don't think a lot of people do. But um, there's a grease fitting on the left side of the neck. It says right in the book, and we all know. How much grease do you put in a U-joint or whatever until it shows up? We'll do the same. If it shows up in the bottom, I found mostly it's showing up at the top too. But you can check. You want to look up there make sure something's coming out of the top. If it's never been done, it'll hold a quarter to a half a tube of grease. I promise you 80% of the bikes that I get in here, no matter where they've been serviced, what's been done, um, they are, they're not, they've never been greased. They've had a couple of pumps that I think the factory just packs the bearings, you know, when they build the bike, and then uh, it says right in there, well, you know how that goes anyway. Anyway, grease the neck first. Sometimes just grease in the neck. Just putting the pressure on the bearings will make the swing the way it should be. I've had that happen, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pop the front bearing off, and uh, we'll get to the, get to uh, that top nut, okay? And we'll just go over this. All right, so let's get this off here the rest of the way. <coughs> get all the other screws out. Remember, I do a lot of this. I know a lot of you know how to do this, but I try to do a lot of this stuff so that, you know, not everybody's done it before. I remember the first time I did it, the first few times I did it, you know, it was wondering what was going to come off where and all that stuff. I'll show you something here too. So just squeeze those prongs in. Make sure you put a fender guard on. Squeeze the two clips in. Disconnect the light. Have a place to put it already. And go ahead and set that aside. Hey, remember too, guys, this is for, this is for 08 and earlier, okay? 09, you do it the same way. You do the 09s the same way, but you, uh, they're less swing. And there's a service bulletin on our website, on the tech page, that talks about this. And I'll get, I, I'm, yeah, I'm sure it's there. Look it up. I mean, I think, and they're actually different um, just for the years. Like a 010 road glide is different than a 010 um, electric glide or, uh, or a um, street glide. Okay, mm -hmm. so those are all different. Road King, whatever. So you need to look that up. You're going to do it the same way. You get to it the same. It's all the same. It's just the swing. The amount of swings are different. All right? So we got that up. I'll show you something I did real quick. What I do. A lot. This actually helps. See this? Yeah, see this? It's another ad. Dynamat. You guys seen it? It's that speaker stuff. See it? It really does. I mean, it, even if you don't have a stereo, I promise it'll make your bike quiet, ride quieter. You don't have that drum with with the air hitting it. It's just it does make a big difference. It'll make your stereo sound better too. Wasn't much, like I think it was 40 bucks. They fit in really nice. Trim it all to fit. Get it at a speaker, a, stereo, a car stereo place. All right, so we got that off. 
and we're going to go ahead and pull a stereo out. You need a ball in. Best thing for that is a ball in out of wrench. All right. So and you need to come in. They even put some slots in here. You can come in through these slots. That's sweet. There's two on each side. <coughs> Your stereo is just going to pull toward you, okay? And providing you don't have a bunch of amps or all kinds of stuff, other stuff you've installed. The one with that. Oh, check your brackets while you got it apart. Check those fairing brackets, push on them, make sure they don't break or haven't broken. Harley's got upgraded ones now. They're welded in here. We welded ours. We started welding ours a long, long time ago. Um, they were, I don't, anyway, they are both. You can get the main ones are stronger now. They have like a doubler in them from the factory. And the, um, the one over the speaker too. Make sure those ears aren't broken. It'll sure tighten up your fairing if you got those cracked. So pull them off either, you know, if you got it, if you're a good TIG welder, you can probably fix them, weld them up just as good. Um, but just go get the, uh, you can't go get the ones that uh, Harley's got now. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and yank these four bolts out, pull this out, and then we'll be at that nut and we'll move on with that. All right, we're gonna need to disconnect the clutch. The book tells you to disconnect everything. And of course, then it tells you to reconnect everything and make sure that it still does the same thing and then, um, and I think the book even says to loosen the, the um, tree clamps. All right, it, no. Right? And then it tells you to reconnect it. Doesn't make sense to me. I'm, you know, do it by the book if you want. But it seems to me, you, if you're just gonna make it do it with everything connected, you need to do it with every, you might as well just do it with everything connected, okay? Except for the clutch cable. The clutch cable will put, in a lot of cases, puts way too much spring back on it, puts too much load on the bar, so you're really not getting a true swing from that, okay? And another thing, real important, we wanna be able to shoot, right now I only have the front wheel off, I just need it to do this so it makes the job easier, but you're gonna to wanna to put another jack under the back, you wanna get both wheels, and again, this is by the book, both the wheels the same amount off the floor, so you don't change the geometry of the bike, okay? So you're doing this with, uh, with the bike as though we're on the road. All right, so we're just, we just wanna get this loose. Now if it's a road king, you don't need to do this. On a road king, you can just uh, take your two bolts out, or these two screws out right here, and you can drop off your clutch lever from there. It might have a be on a clamp on the tree, but you can just move that too. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that, man. I have to take care of some business here from that. So, like I said, it's a road king. You drop it off at the bars. If uh, anything else, just uh, we're just going to release the clutch cable. So just loosen the lock nut. Run that all the way up. Adjuster. You need a 916 and a half inch wrench. The adjuster, you just crank that all the way up. <coughs> so you taking all the tension off of your clutch cable, okay? And there we go. So we got all that off. And then you see you got the clutch. Um, you need a pair of snap ring, nice snap ring pliers. Yeah. <laughs> and depending on how old you are, <laughs> uh, the brighter the light is that you'll need to do this. Uh, did you know that Light, the brightness of the light is an exponential of our age. I mean, that only makes sense, right, man? Because we, as we get older, we, we need brighter lights to be able to see stuff. Okay, anyway. 
Never mind. Anyway, so we're going to get this little clip off. There it is. Probably the hardest thing. Ah. I gotta stick these two little pins in these two little holes. I can't even see. Look at that. There's a challenge, huh? So we got the ring, the clip off. We're gonna go ahead and take this pin out. The clip is on. Like so. And we're gonna pull the lever towards me. Cable out of the groove. Pull the lever out. Here we go. Okay, so we got this is out. And there's that plastic pin, nylon pin, it's nylon. Nylon pin holding the cable in, okay? So we're all good there. Circle it. And that goes through, normally, I mean, from the fact that you got a hole through your fairing, and then this cable will go through that piece of your fairing bracket. So it goes through that. You just want to make sure it when it's run that it's not binding up on your front end. That your front end swings as free as possible with your clutch cable in. Okay? So here we go. We got clutch cable off. Let me grab one of my other jacks. <coughs> and we'll get the back wheel off the floor. What we're going to shoot for is having both wheels just like about a quarter inch off the floor. So the front end's swinging free and the back's the same amount. Oh. What kind of tires do you guys run? Uh, what do you guys like best? Let me know. I'm pretty much like the E3s. I like the price, I like the handling, and they seem to last quite a while. Anyway, let me know. Everything makes a difference, you know, tires, air pressure. Okay, so here we go. One, two. Okay, and I'm going to mess that up. <laughs> this is pretty much what I would call perfect, okay? This is what I like. Now, the book we were looking at earlier. Okay. There you go. Dun, 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 dun. So, one full swing and stopping is not enough. Okay. Going past center and coming back is not enough. And going past center and back and back and back back and back is too many <laughs> and what the book's saying is right there okay so the past center back past center and back now what we found we did this a lot Let me tell you for a second. I did this I took five bites 
and I made them all, we know the general area that they need to be in, right? I made them all swing, what was it, two times, two and a half times, three times, and four times. What is it? Two, three, and four. That's what it was, okay? So we made every bike. We took each bike and we made it go one, okay? Then we made it go one, two, three, like the book says. And we made them go one, one, two, three, four, okay? And with five different bikes, and we wanted to see if any of them handled better at different places. What we found, because the book's telling you one, two, three, okay? Let's show you what this one's doing. One, two, and it just breaks. You gonna see that? Did you see that? One, two, just breaks. That's where we found that these the 2008 and earlier bikes handle the best. They don't need to come all the way back to center, but they need to break to center on that third swing. Right? So once, twice, and it breaks. Just moves, okay? Doesn't need it. it actually comes pretty close to center. Doesn't need to come quite to center, but it does need to break. If it only goes one, two, and stays, no good. Okay? It's got to go one, two, and start coming back. It doesn't need to come all the way. Although, that's a good thing. You got to think about what we're trying to get here. You know, we're trying to run down the road and have it so our front wheel will find center, neutral, no matter what we're doing, our front wheel will find center. Right? We don't want it too tight because then it's too hard for it to get to center. And, and we don't want it too loose because then it's just chasing us. All right? And they are right about this. So we've got the clutch cable disconnected. Now this bike's exactly where I like it. But I'm going to go ahead and bust it loose and show you what it takes to get it to you. Okay? What, what I think. And I'll show you where the star nut is and how to get on all that. All right, so here we are, guys. We got, uh, this is pretty much perfect. This is where I like it to be, all right? So we'll mess it up. I'll show you how to get back there. And it's what we're gonna shoot for right there, so. There's a little tab on the back of this nut. There's actually two tabs. Only one of them needs to be bent up. Um, it's just to lock the nut on. You're supposed to torque this nut from 60 to 80 foot pounds. This big nut on top, okay? And yeah, it could be too loose. Um, if it's too loose, you'll get a clunk. You'll hear your neck move up and down when you hit a bump or something. So you need to make sure it's tight enough. So what I do is I get close with the star adjuster underneath. I'll show you where that is. And then I uh, make my final adjustment with this big nut on top. All right, so we got that bust loose, and you'll see. One, two, three, four, one, two. <laughs> yeah, all right, you ever felt that before, huh? Can you relate with that? I've actually had bikes in here that the nut was torqued and tight, and that's what they did. And I promise you, if that's what your bike's doing, <coughs> you're not gonna get it to tight. Okay? So, look at that now. We got one, two, three, four, five. Let's try it one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, almost. Now, I didn't feel this was a little tight when I busted this loose. 
feels like it was a little tight to me. So I'm gonna uh, adjust the star. We're gonna back, we're gonna tighten the star up a little and we're gonna get this down to a, maybe four or five swings. With the star adjuster, we're gonna get this to four or five swings. And then we'll use some torque up here to get it down to that spot that we like it back. So let's tighten it up just a little bit. That's about it. Make this little so not quite so many swings. And you know if you got a rope game, you pretty much got to take from the cell. You can maybe get to it. And get to the top. Oh, and this doesn't take much at all. Well, I'll show you. But one point, if you turn the distance of one point, look at that, okay? It tightens it up a lot. And you'll get down there. You can probably, I mean, I have to do it. I've done it a number of times and I still have to do it. If it takes me two or three times with the top torque and and how tight to make this one before I get them just like I want them. So don't get discouraged. Don't think it's going to happen the first time that you do it. Three, four, five. Still pretty loose, huh? Let's get just a little bit more on that. Let me get a torque wrench. Alright, this is a, by the way, it's a one and a half inch nut on top. Let's just start at 60 foot pounds. the wheel it's too hard for the wheel to find that neutral position Watch. one two see 
Yeah, let's loosen it up a little. Let's try that one more time. One, two. It's breaking. It just is breaking for that third swing. One, two. I don't know how good I feel about that. I'm thinking just a hair too tight. what I told you though, huh? One more time. One, two. two. It's breaking for the third swing. One, two, three. And it's even coming back to center. You guys are pretty much straight on there, right? One, two, See that? One more time. One, two, three. And that's right at 60. I tell you what though, I think I'm gonna back that collar off just a hair and see if we don't I get this torque maybe up to 65, you know, 68, okay? And uh, see if we can get the same result with that, doing just a little more torque on the top. I'd be a little bit more comfortable with it being just a hair more loose. One, two, it just breaks. But I want that to be a little bit more of a clear break. And I wouldn't mind having 65 foot pounds on the top. One, two, okay, ready? Let me loosen that up just a little bit and I'll get right back to you.